Uncharted 4 is one of the greatest video games ever made, ignoring that movie with Tom Holland in it. The game's universe is one of the best out there, and just like this game being the best, the girl villain in this game also has the best physique I have ever seen and makes me look like a little boy. Uncharted 4 has 56 trophies and a 0.6% completion rate for the Platinum Trophy. It took me 28 hours to do, but when I finally finished the Platinum, I realized how I could have done it so so much faster. With the many glitches most people don't know about, much like the trophy you get for reenacting a glitch with the game at E3, this game is full of trophy glitches which make it very very easy and a lot more fun. Nonetheless, I did play this entire thing on crushing difficulty on my first playthrough so I could still feel like I earned this game's trophy. The game begins with the most normal boat ride in the ocean and after crashing we wake up and see ourselves as a child again, being touched by a nun, who must have casted a spell on us to turn us back into a pubescent boy. In order to escape her spell, I jump out a window and find my brother Sam who is gonna help me escape this nun's hotel she is running for little boys. Such a weird fetish but it is 2023 and Chris from Mr. Beast exists, so I'm not surprised by anything anymore. Our brother takes us with him and we drive so fast we ended up in a foreign jail and I'm fighting the entire Mexican cartel for fun. Taco Tuesday's regular stops the fight and turns out he is our homie. Just kidding, we kill him because he stole Rafe's guac packet and he paid good money for that. Now that all of the taco enthusiasts have been alerted with gunfire, signifying someone is probably not okay, they all try to kill us as we run around this very complex prison. I don't know what unpaid labor caused this place to be such a major but god damn is it almost as complex as woman. After reaching nature, our brother is yet again trying to be a hero and gets shot as he jumps for the exit, causing him to get left behind and our main character to go into an identity crisis. We try to end it all, but forget the ocean has water and we end up underwater in the next chapter. What a cute little transition. I would be impressed, but I've already beaten Subnautica, so take that game. Oh yeah, and we also got a intro credit thing for the game. Uh, by the way, that intro was an hour long, which is insane. Anyways, Nate, who is the character we play as all game, finally finally got a real job and he dives underwater for trash. So basically he's a glorified trash man who has to put in way more work. We do the job and then I randomly found a treasure sitting next to this old white man. I wonder what he did last night. Returning home, we find Nathan residing in his attic because he can't stand that bitch he married. And they don't even have kids yet. What a true man. Deciding to fight his schizophrenia with a toy gun instead of just shooting himself. After totally not losing to my wife in Crash Bandicoot on the PlayStation, we switch over to Nate's brother who, shocker, isn't actually dead. Oh my god, I never saw that coming. Can you hear the sarcasm in my voice? Yeah, that's what it sounds like when your parents say they love you. Now, since this is already like two hours in the game and I have yet to really commit any murder on men who have families waiting for them at home, the game lets me use guns and I end up killing thousands within the blink of an eye. Oh, and uh, we also escape prison with a bad man who wants like half the treasure or something that we are after. And if we don't give it to him, he will just kill us all and stuff. So it's a super wholesome day if we were being honest. Before all of that, I did die a lot because it's yet again on crushing difficulty, which extended this playthrough for me by at least 23 brain cells. <laughs> Sam finds Nathan and shockingly Nate isn't even surprised to see his long lost dead brother. In fact, he acts the same as he always does, leading me to believe he is a psychopath. Then again, he does kill people in every game and never questions his morals, so we should have seen this all along. Nathan agrees to join Sam's treasure hunting journey, and he lies to his wife like he does every time he is away on a business trip, reminding me a lot about your father and his personal life. Oh my god! We then take a super fast trip to Italy and are trying to steal a piece of art from an art auction. After doing some parkour with our old body which can't even throw the hook anymore, we end up inside and quickly change out of our parkour uniform. We see daddy and he helps us throughout the whole game by giving us wisdom and cookies under the cover. In order to blend in with the rich people, instead of wearing a douchier suit, we decide it's smarter to go and cosplay as a gay waiter. So we steal the outfits from unassuming victims just like Dahmer and his boyfriends. The power gets cut and magically the artifact is gone in an instant. Rafe sees us walk out and somehow he knows it's not just a waiter leaving for the bathroom. His penis must have gotten really hard after seeing Sam's behind again. We run around on the rooftops pretending to be Spider-Man, yet Nathan Drake can only shoot one web every few minutes. Come. Nadine stops her path and after flirting with her, Nathan sees how muscular she is and comes to the conclusion that she must be a man. So we fight to gain back our dignity and we lose horribly. This must be a feminist wet dream second place being the Barbie movie. After escaping the She-Hulk on trend, we try to escape the art gala, 
And right at the very end of the mission, I felt my soul first truly fall apart. Dying over and over really made me feel something again. And it's too bad so many of you hated me having a face cam in my last video because I would have put lots of rage reactions right here. But so be it. Eventually, we escaped and Daddy drove us to safety so we could examine the weird looking cross in detail. After having the talk with Daddy, he sends me and Sam to a church so we can be forgiven for our sins. Instead, we just silently kill enemies so we can feel better about our actions. This mission has the first few real puzzles of the game, and after using a cool grave entrance, we enter the dead man's land. And not just my channel. I quickly solved this puzzle making me feel like a genius, but I remember that kids have also beaten this game, so my pride is put in check again. Shocker, the treasure isn't here. Loki, it would have been funny if it was though, and the game just ended. I reached another annoying section and kept dying again which really began to start crushing my soul. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> okay, I'll stop. But this endless nightmare which started to feel like dating my ex again ended up being a good thing because I got so many kills within all this fighting that I got a trophy for headshots. So no head? Much later, we end up in a cave and I found my first journal entry, which are just tiny little drawings Nate jots down when he is in a horny mood. The water puzzle is one of the harder puzzles in the game. Naughty Dog thought it was real funny to put it so early on in this adventure. I, however, didn't really struggle through this, but let's just say if it weren't for Sam next to me, I would have definitely ceased to exist at least once. After completing the puzzle, I found my first note, which is another collectible in this game. Too bad I can't read cursive. Did that scare you? Well, if it did, then good, because we got jump scared by the man woman and her goon squad. We then have to fight Rafe and her army for the next 30 minutes straight as I die and am a part of numerous lawsuits that violate the Geneva Conventions. But within this panic, I got another combat trophy, which is starting to become too easy since I simply don't stealth like a true gamer. Thankfully, Daddy was waiting to pick us up in the cold water and we swim over to him and escape without any trouble at all. You'd think with all the bombs the enemy had, they just try to blow up the plane while it's sitting there for hours. But what do I know? Stop. The fun must cease for a minute because Nate gets a call from his so-called wife, if that's even true. And she begins to barge us with questions about the job. And like any good man, Nathaniel lies right through his teeth, like she did when asked about her time in college. She must be from Dirty Dad. That's what I'm saying! Anyways, back to the story. Sam and Nate get joined by Daddy on this very exclusive mission. And on this very mission, I end up dying a new record of times. But it's okay because the color palette on this one mission outdoes every single COD game to ever exist. This mission wasn't very much fun though, since all we did was drive around in our Jeep for the PlayStation X Jeep ad, and then fall off a bridge. But on the next mission, we get to explore the culture and the surrounding area and see a ton of unassuming civilians, who must all think we're just here on vacation or to see our sneaky link. But they are horribly misguided since instead of getting to know their culture, we do a deed for them all and try to advance them to the modern age by destroying their entire clock tower and bell tower at the same time. Now the poor citizens won't know what time it is. Thankfully, the sun is still on. After taking some copyrighted pictures of dead people, we get a call from Rafe, and it turns out he hijacked our phones and has been listening and following along with our entire journey to this point. The man might never do any real work, but damn does he know how to cheat better than even my ex-girlfriend. I reach another halting point in my Uncharted 4 adventure and begin to return to the grave like I was meant to at first. Again, after dying many, many times, I get a combat trophy. This is starting to become a trend, but at least I got something out of it unlike when I dated that one girl. Anyways, this mission is actually a lot of fun and we get to ride cars, blow up cars, get dragged by cars, get chased by cars, and chase cars. And we even crash our own car. But we make it out alive somehow, once more, confirming my theory of plot armor on this guy Nathan. And just as all the boys are living it up, the dumb woman returns and crashes the party. She threatens divorce, and I tell her ass she can have the kids. Good thing we don't even have any. Sam, now witnessing his brother undergoing a very harsh divorce, decides it would be good for us to go away somewhere tropical and regroup with our senses of nature rehabilitation. So we go to the world's most beautiful tropical place I have ever seen. Like, just look at that water. Sadly, all the fun has ended when a storm comes by and we see the intro of the game all over again. Nathan wakes up on a wet beach all alone, not even knowing if his pants are wet because he pissed himself. Again? or if it's just the rain. I'll guess it's probably just the rain. But when I'm around, your mom can't ever tell the difference either. For some reason, I couldn't do this mission for the life of me, and I had to respawn after dying so many times it nearly drove me to insanity. Mostly because there's only one checkpoint on this mission, and it's like literally at the beginning of the combat every single time. But once I finally tried to be stealthy, it ended up working for once, and I even got a trophy for stealth kills. On the next combat encounter, which happened basically right after, we get to re-experience it all again, 
but it's even worse this time. I think this is definitely the most I have ever been punished in a span of an hour, aside from spending time with my ex's mom, who is still the craziest person I've ever met. She must have just got too many platinum trophies because this would drive you nuts real fast. Eventually, Nadine shows up again and she tries to outman me, but she fails to because I have a penis and she does it. At least I don't think she does. I, I guess I, I need proof. After doing some online research, which I won't specify which kind, there is a whole family meeting with Rafe and all the important characters. Yes, Nathan's girl, wife, ex-wife, but wife isn't here. Thank God. Oh, sh there she is. Honestly, she low-key got the body of that one girl from The Last of Us game, but like, if she did a cut instead of the forever bulk she was on. We have a bunch of dumb combat missions with her, while we try to take our Jeep ad further into the story. They really insist on us driving it everywhere, and I mean everywhere. We take the damn thing up river, and then onto a 400-year-old elevator. Like, that's a good idea. Even color wasn't invented by then, so I can't imagine what logic they used when doing engineering. Once we ditch the Jeep, the most normal modern-day married people reach a room full of dead pirates, finding out that all the super cool pirates that we've been learning about all game died due to poisoning by the psychotic Henry Avery, who is the dude who got the treasure we trying to steal. Uncharted 4 Tunnel Mission. If you did this on crushing difficulty, bless your soul, because I know how much pain this was. There is mummies down here who just blow up the second you get anywhere near them, and their blast radius is approximately 223 feet because you can't dodge these even if you try. I ended up getting stuck here and looking up what to do because I couldn't handle being suicide bombed by a dead man one more time. We did get some romantic times inside a net though with our wife who hates us. And then she finally died. Just kidding, she was faking. My disappointment is immeasurable. I reached another combat encounter where I died repeatedly, but to be honest, that's just normal gameplay now in this playthrough. However, I have died so much, I did the thousand kills trophy all without even reaching the end of one playthrough, which I think is an achievement in itself. This and exactly finally, we find the treasure which this we have been after this entire game. It's actually kind of underwhelming, and it's just sort of sitting in a crashed ship. Not sure how it took people 400 years to find it, but I guess it did. Our brother Sam left us to try and catch up with Rafe, who was already there. This would prove to be dumb, as we all knew, and he gets killed sort of, and we try to save him as the whole ship is burning in flames. Rafe and me are about to take each other both out and bring poetic justice to the end of this game. Nadine, however, forgot to take her testosterone shot this morning and felt womanly compassion for once, joining the good guy side and taking both of our guns away from us, leaving Rafe with only a sword, and we have a sword fight with Rafe even though I didn't get one. But after struggling through this fight for about 30 minutes, I end up with a sword and kill Rafe by crushing him with a ton of random treasure. Now that's poetic justice. We save Sam and then watch like 45 minutes of cutscenes and credits to get to the end of the game and receive all our trophies for beating the story on crushing difficulty and therefore all the others also. There is lots of ways to go about finishing this game's trophy list after your first playthrough. I decided to first cheese the speedrun trophy which was a giant help because that one is actually insane if you do it legit. To glitch this trophy all you have to do is start up a new game and then go to the credit scene. You can also do the same thing for the accuracy playthrough which I also did. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I ended up doing the multiplayer trophy next just so I can make sure the lobbies would still fill up and it was possible. Luckily enough there are still people playing this game's multiplayer in 2023, which is actually funny as hell considering I didn't even know it had a multiplayer function. The Uncharted 4 multiplayer low-key looks like a weird fever dream I had last night. It's just odd in every way possible. Then I went back into the story and decided to go and do every combat challenge or miscellaneous trophy on each chapter. I first began by knocking over all those rock tower thingies on that one colorful chapter, which was pretty self-explanatory. The only difficult part about that trophy was saying its name. I then got headshots while swinging on a rope, which was very easy once I was able to use the slow motion boost attained by finishing the entire game. Then I had to get 30 vertical stealth takedowns, which I only had done like one time throughout this entire game so far, making me restart from this checkpoint for like 20 minutes and I low-key went a tad bit insane. But I got the trophy, so take that Uncharted 4, you won't break me. Only she can. The next combat trophy was a lot easier. All I had to do was get 10 kills while swapping from melee to gun and vice versa. I then farmed the 100 kills without dying trophy by killing the same 4 dudes who just can't get enough of Nathan Drake's perky butt. You then have to do a very oddly specific trophy where you are required to defeat enemies with a pistol, machine gun, and grenade in that order in 15 seconds. The wording alone made me die inside, but I actually did a first try, which is a first for me. I then did one of those annoying stealth missions, actually stealthily, which I don't think's a real word. I had to make an enemy drop his grenade 10 times or something like that. And Daddy, for whatever reason, decides to finally pull out the aimbot, and his stupid ass guy Sully kept on killing the guy I need to throw a grenade. He literally made me sit there for 30 minutes trying to get this trophy because his ass wanted to finally help. Anyways, I got a quad feed with an RPG in Uncharted 4, and I got a trophy for doing the most Call of Duty thing ever. And 
And during my time in Iraq, I also killed 10 men within 60 seconds with a China Lake grenade launcher. And then I shot out a load of cars while being dragged like a kidnapping victim. There was another time limit to trophy, and this time it's actually quite hard. You must get a stealth kill, melee kill, headshot kill, and then dynamite kill within 15 seconds. Again, very, very weird, but I did it, so whatever. I beat up a ton of armored guys who were basically devil spawn on crush difficulty, and little teddy bears on explorer. I did a ton of missions without killing anyone, getting a trophy for being a little bitch. Sam wanted to go pick up one of the gay dudes from prison, so I was his wingman on this new journey in his life. No questions asked. I made the same guy fall to his death 20 times, making him wish he was never born. And then I played with a lemur, which I have actually never seen once in real life. So I'm gonna go to the zoo next week and fulfill my dream of seeing one. I think the devs typed this trophy wrong or something because the title made me feel retarded, but it's for using all the guns in the game. And then I climbed up the tallest building in the game and I still can't find anyone who cares about you. Returning to the water bucket puzzle, but this time I had a tutorial speedrun and did it in like 6 moves to get a trophy for cheating like all the girls do. I then played this weird game with a deformed raccoon who was like oddly colored or something. If anyone in the comments knows what this game is, let me know since it's kind of fun and I even got the high score. Then I got 2 trophies on the same mission where you go to that super tropical pretty place. One for being chased by submissive and breedable dolphins, and another for making a Marco Polo joke as a grown man. Which is still cool. I took a selfie of daddy since he owns me. And I stood still with daddy watching me as he yelled curses at me saying stuff like, This is why mom left us. Whatever that means. We finally let Elena, Nathan's wife, drive, and she nearly crashed. Not a shocker. I had to return to the sword fight with Rafe to relive his hot body. And after getting rid of Jake Gyllenhaal's lookalike, without being hit once, I got a trophy. Now we have finally done all the miscellaneous trophies. All that remain are the collectibles which I left for the end because it really reminds me how much death would just be so easy. But I got all of them without much trouble, and that was the Uncharted 4 Platinum Trophy. If you guys want to see more Uncharted on this channel, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe.